I, I, I was always a little bit bigger, but my dad would always kind of make me go wrestle with like Mike Brown or maybe Dean Thomas. I wrestled Tiago Alves sometimes. Um, I even remember wrestling Hector Lombard for a little bit, you know. So, the Bahamasi, he just won this this week yesterday. Um, you know, I remember uh, oh, I just did a video with Alessio Sakara, um, helping him out for Chris Weidman and and uh, Patrick Cote when I was like 15 years old, 16. You know, I, I just have tons of guys, man. And um, to be honest, it's it's mind boggling because I always thought it was so cool, so cool. But I thought it was so cool, like me being there. But they thought it was so cool that I was helping them. And I was like, who am I? I don't, you know. They're like, oh, the coach's son's helping me. You know, it's amazing. I have a bunch of like UFC gloves, a memorabilia of like, hey, give this to your son. You know. Appreciate the time, man. And uh, let's jump right into it. You know, February eighteenth. PFL Challenger won your the main event against Mohamed Juma, eight and two record. All his wins are finishes. What are your thoughts on him and his style? Um, I know Juma is um, he has a lot of knockouts and stuff. Power guy. Um, I feel like everybody has power. You know, if you if you got up to this point of of your career, um, you have to have a little, you have to have something, some some attributes. So I think. Power is something we deal with all the time. Um, nothing too crazy, but, um, you know, just uh, going to do my thing, man. I think I'll be able to I'll wrestle him and uh, figure out the puzzles, the puzzle pieces, I guess you could say. Your your opponent, he's coming off a loss due to fish hooking. You know, that's a pretty major foul in in the sport, right? You know, is that something that you that concerns you a little bit heading into this fight? The DQ? Yeah. The, the DQ thing? Yeah. Um, not so much necessarily. Um, but, I mean, there's a saying like, growing up in the wrestling world, um, the coaches used to tell us, um, always protect yourself, you know, don't let the ref protect you. So that's always been like my mentality. Um, he could try to... I, I think it was like fish hooking or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, if he tries to put his finger in my mouth, I'll, I'll, I'll try to bite it. Uh, <laughs> but um, I don't think that'll happen, man. You know what I mean? Um, I, I protect myself. And, you know, I hope the ref will, you know, the, I hope the ref does protect this, but I'll be protecting myself. Yeah, I think that's something that the ref should know and consider when they're yeah. refing this fight because you don't want that to happen again and you don't want to have to bite his finger off, right? Like, you don't want that. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, you're a uh, your your LFA double champ, man. Undefeated record. If you look back at at your performances, which fight do you feel like has been your masterpiece so far? Um, I feel like my last fight um was definitely um something that was much needed for my career. Um, I, I felt like a lot of my fights finished pretty fast. I feel like the 25 minutes was uh was so beneficial for the long run, you know, especially to get me ready for the PFL. Um, I think that that five round fight, you know, you really get to dig, not just the fight, the camp, all that stuff, you know? So I think, uh, I think that definitely is gonna carry with me throughout my career. Yeah, you and know? in the fight with uh, Jared Ravel, he, you know, Jared. he's a guy that's highly touted, man. He, he, that was a great win. When you go back into that fight, that third round, when you're heading into the fourth round, into the championship rounds, take us into your head, man. What were you feeling? So I think of it kind of, it's kind of funny, but I think of it a little opposite. So I think of it like the first two rounds is, um, I think of it like, okay, not that they're like a warm-up round at all. I don't think that at all, one bit. I think the first two rounds is just the extra rounds. I think of it the reverse. So when I get to that third round, in my mind, I'm like, oh, we're in the, we're in any other fight that we've been training for. I got, I already did the two. Here, here's, here's the real now. You know, regardless, even if you do lose the first two, you gotta win those, you gotta win those last three. You know, I don't think of it like, oh, I'm tired now. I'm in the championship rounds. No, we've always been in the championship rounds. We've always been in it. You know, there's no, there's all, it's all championship rounds. You know, so. I think of it just, it's, I'm fighting an extra 10 minutes, you know what I mean? So that was, uh, 
beneficial in a way where I, I and plus with my dad and the American Top Team, um, they get you ready, man. Because those extra ten minutes could could really hinder you or could make you be another person. You know. Yeah, I think a lot of eyes were on you at that moment. You know what I mean? Because you finished fight so quick. Yeah. To where, like, uh oh, he's getting yeah. into these rounds where he's never been. Let's see how he reacts to that. And and then you proved a lot, man, going all 25 minutes and, and getting the victory, getting the belt. Um, you mentioned your, your father, the legend, Conan. American Top Team is your home. Take us back to the first time walking into that gym and, and actually training with the pro team. Yeah, so I, I've always kind of been around the pro team, but um, helping out with the wrestling or something, but. When, when I first went in as, you know, an MMA guy, like, hey, I'm trying to do this. I have a fight coming up. Um, of course, man, you know, um, you, you get a little anxious sometimes, you know, and you think of, like, there's no way that I'm sparring with, you know, the top 10 guys in the weight class in the world. They're all here, you know. There's, like, five of them here, you know, or six of them. Um, it, it gets a little, you know, I guess, you know, you could, you could get in your head a little bit, but after a while... The, the, the worst thing you could have for the sport of MMA, um, and probably for anything else in life, is a false sense of confidence. You know what I mean? And uh, if you have a false sense of confidence, uh, it's going to show in the fight. But you got to take care of those um, those faults and stuff in the gym. You know, an American top team, as scary as it is, those, those trainings with those monsters and those sparring sessions, I know I leave there with the right mindset and exactly what I need to do. I don't have any yes man patting me on the back and I don't have all these um, people that telling me I could do it, I could do it because I'm beating everybody up in the gym. It doesn't work like that, you know? Some days you win, some days you lose. American Top Team, I've never seen anybody consistently beat ass all the time. Eventually they will run into a problem, you know? And that's, it's humbling. It keeps your false sense of confidence very low, <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to deal with that, and you, you're going to be ready. You know what I mean? If anybody who beats us in fights is because they, they train hard, man. American Top Team is the best team in the world, you know? In the early days, who gave you the best rounds? Who gave you the rounds that were most educational to you? Um. So in the earlier days, I, I remember, um, man, I remember working out with, I, I, I was always a little bit bigger, but my dad would always kind of make go wrestle with like Mike Brown or maybe Dean Thomas. I wrestled Tiago Alves sometimes. Um, I even remember wrestling Hector Lombard for a little bit, you know. Sabah Masi, he just won this this week yesterday. Um, you know, I remember uh, oh, I just did a video with Alessio Sakara um, helping him out for Chris Weidman and and uh, Patrick Cote when I was like 15 years old, 16. You know, I, I just have tons of guys, man, and um, to be honest, it's it's mind boggling because I always thought it was so cool, so cool. But I thought it was so cool, like me being there. But they thought it was so cool that I was helping them, and I was like, "Who am I? I don't, you know." They're like, "Oh, the coach's son's helping me." You know, it's amazing. I have a bunch of like UFC gloves, a memorabilia of like, "Hey, give this to your son," you know. So I mean, I wouldn't have any specific to answer your question. I wouldn't have any specific person, but man, there's a handful of guys, man, just. Even like Tiago Silva from back in the day, his crazy ass, you know what I mean? We don't see him around anymore, but just like, just having those little moments um, with those guys, you know, and regardless of how, how things happen afterwards, you know, because things change, um, they're always going to be with me forever, you know? Yeah. Always forever. Yeah, the memories are always there. And now, you know, the shoe is on the other foot, so to say, where you're in the spotlight. And those guys are kind of like the OGs, their coaches, or they've kind of moved on from their careers. You're hitting in, uh, yeah. heading in, into the PFL. You're probably one of the biggest prospects out there right now. You know, what was the process of deciding to go with the PFL? So I think, I think it was a little bit of, uh, you know, it's a little bit of everything. You know, it's a little bit of how I feel, um, but mostly what my team thinks. You know, I think. If you don't have your coach on board, or in my case, Dan Lambert, you know, uh, my father, uh, Richie Puma, there's another guy over there. I don't think if, you, if you're not moving with them, and these guys are experienced, not just experienced on the mat, they're experienced with the political aspect too, you know. So I think 
um, I had to get my my team on board, um, and they all they all just straight up told me, man. They're like, "We think the PFL is great for you." Um, you know, I, I even I asked Dan, for example, if I uh, we have this big showcase of belts, right? I said, "Hey, Dan, you're gonna throw my LFA belt in there." He looks at me. He goes, "Nah, not LFA." And he walks off, you know, because he's keeping me humble. He knows LFA is a great thing. The double champ is amazing. But if you look on the paper, you know, I'm only 7-0. and oh. It's not that many. You know, there's a lot more experience out there. You know, um, why rush to go to the UFC, you know, or why rush to go, you know, if, if I want to go for the fame, maybe go, you know. But if I want to go smart, um, respect the game. We gotta respect the game. This is fight. It's a fight game. We gotta respect it. You know. So I, I feel like the the PFL put me in the right place at the right time. I'll be able to get four or five fights this year. Kind of repeat what I did last year. Put a little money in my pocket. You know, get to enjoy myself a little bit. Continue this little journey, and then maybe after 10, 11 fights, you know, I'll stress myself and go. F- get stressed out and have to go fight a fight that's going to be a little stressful but you know i've seen too many guys rush to the ufc maybe rush to the bellator you know or or i've seen too many guys just rush in general man and it's like that person who skips the line and they get caught in the front they have to like walk all the way to the back of the line same concept you know and i don't want to have to do that and i feel like the pfl was just right there and i feel like they're doing they're they're growing i feel like they're growing right now you know they're definitely growing, man. They just signed a huge deal with ESPN to extend the the broadcasting deal, so you know they're going to be around for a while. Um, exactly. And you said you said it right there, man. Some people, some fighters, they don't have the right guidance, and then they get pushed into like certain situations, like you mentioned the cutting yeah. in line, and then you, you got guys like you, like, hey, what are you doing? Get back. You know what I mean? They get their little humble pie. To be honest. You could try, you could cut the line, man. MMA is one of those those truthful sports, man. Nobody has to come and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, I don't think this sport's for you. Trust me, a punch is going to tell you that. You know, a kick to the liver is going to tell you that. You're going to get choked out. and Eventually, you're going to tell yourself that. So it's a sport, it's a, a sport that if you don't take your time, you don't take the steps, eventually, you know, something's going to... Something bigger than what you thought you could handle it's always happening. You just have to be ready. It's a sport about being ready. You brace yourself for a lot of stuff, you know? At your home, American Top Team, you have watched teammates after teammate win $1 million. Does that have an effect on you? You know, you enter the gym and this guy's carrying around? Of course, of course. Um, before I, I um, like, uh, put it on media... Um, I, I went up to all my teammates, um, majority of them that's there, and I talked to all of them. You know, um, I think it's amazing. Like Shoeface, for example, you know, he won it. You know, I I I was one of one of the big part of his training camps for that PFL. I helped him for a couple fights, especially against the wrestler at the end. You know, um, I believe I told I told Shoeface uh, while we were drilling jujitsu together. I, I, we were drilling jujitsu. I got hey, I got something to tell you. He goes, oh, what's up, man? I was like, I, I signed with the PFL. And I hope you understand. You know, I want to win a million too. He starts laughing. He's hugging me. You know what I mean? I, I, he knows if we ever if we have to fight each other, if I have to fight a teammate, I think that's the easiest part for us. I think the hard part is getting to here. You know. The, the hard part's the journey, man. Getting to the big show. This is this is the easy part, man. We we got we came. We were here. Let's make money together now. You know, let's uh, let's do great things. You know, I don't think um, having my teammates in the tournament is a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. You know, um, at the end of the day, they could they could financially do something for themselves, and I think we could all do it. That's 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 what you want to do as friends, right? Don't you want you want to grow with your friends and stuff, you know? So I don't have no envious in my heart, man. Uh, fighting is a glorious sport, you know. So whatever you get going for you, you deserve. And if you don't deserve it, eventually somebody will take it away from you. You know, it's just a, one of those sports. Eat together, man. You got to eat together. Yeah, That's what it's about. Exactly. Exactly. February eighteenth, man. The main event. You step in there first uh, PFL fight. What do you see? What type of performance are you expecting out of yourself? You know, I was saying, I was explaining this to some other people. You know, I'm fighting February 18th. I know the tournament starts in April. 
You know, you put everything aside. Put the PFL, put all everything aside. Just put, you know, Josh Severa's MMA career. You know, I just fought December. I'll be fighting again in February. You know, if on paper, it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm keeping it rolling. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. We're keeping it rolling. We're doing something right. Um, I don't see anything changing, man. You know, uh-huh. I'm gonna let the fight develop. Looking for a finish, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, and just keep it going. You know, I fight in February. I'll be back in April. I'm telling you, man. We're just gonna keep this 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 ball going until um, some better better deals come up, and we could change our life for the better. But I like where I'm at right now, and. Uh, I like that I'm fighting fit in February. You know, it's like a, a little warm up for the year. Yeah, it is. It's almost an an advantage for you, man, because the other guys have just been sitting around. They're training, of course, but they've been kind of they're not in competition like you are in camps. So yeah, a lot of momentum for yourself. Uh, one last thing, man, before I let you go. Um, as an up and coming fighter, you know, you have a lot of people around you. You know, it's very important for you to have the right energy, the right people. How do you separate negativity from, like, constructive criticism? Oh, well, far and foremost, constructive criticism has to be, um, it has to be something very, it affects you, but it doesn't affect you in a way where, take, soak it in. If someone's telling you something and their, their profession is what they're showing you, you know, my father's telling you something, I'll give you an example. I, I sparred I spar Dalton Rasta, who just fought. Uh, his, his, last, his last week of sparring, um, I was getting into my camp. It was his last two weeks. I'm getting into my camp. He's getting ready to fight. Of course, he's on this sharp edge. Probably, he's kind of probably grumpy too. And he has all this fight mentality, you know. And I sparred with him. And we sparred well. You know, obviously, we don't want to hurt each other. But, um... There was just some things that um, I didn't feel well. Like uh, he was just putting the pace on me. You know what I mean? Just kind of just, it was his good, he had a good day, you know? And I text my father and I'm like, man, I, I, I feel kind of upset. And my dad's like, you should, you should feel upset. You should feel the way you feel. At least you're acknowledging your criticism. Don't pat yourself on the back when there's no need to pat yourself on the back. You know what I mean? And this sport's not, this is the way this sport is. You can't get nothing back. You can only wait for the next day to try it again. You know what I mean? You know, if you got your ass whooped one day, you can't get it back. You just got to wait for the next day to, 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 to present your performance again. You know, and I think as long as you find a balance, um, as, as Coach Jones used to say, Z Jones from Arizona State, don't be too high in the highs, don't be too low in the lows. Try to find the middle ground. So when you're doing great in life, Learn how to bring yourself down. Learn how to be humble. And when you're going, when you're down in the dumps, learn how to pick yourself up. So I try to find that balance. Um, so with constructive criticism, I see it as someone who just loves me and they just want me to do better. You know, I never take anything away from trying to better my MMA career. You know what I mean? And I, everyone loves me. They're around me. Even my mom, man. My mom tells me some stuff that, I, that she probably doesn't know. But I listen to her. You know why? Because at the end of the day, the, the 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 intentions are good. You know what I mean? You know, so I, I'm cool with constructive criticism. It's been around my whole life. Um, I think it's made me a better person. I think it can make any everyone a better person. You gotta stay open minded. You know. February 18th, man. PFL Challenger one. You're back in action. Thank you, Josh, for the time, man. Good luck on the fight. <laughs> yeah, man. Wait, guys. I can't wait. And uh, this year is gonna be a fun year. And I'm like, I, I'm like a horse, man, and, and the jockey race was ready to run free, man. You know, I feel like I'm so seasoned, 29 years old. I've been kind of like in the shadows, like just, just who's this kid? Who's this kid, man? I just can't wait to break free and show you guys, man, some more of Josh Severa, you know? 